I'm a little bit backed up on mail. This mail haul is special because all of these boxes come from friends of the channel. The only thing is, I only know what's in one of them. And the rest of them, I had a lot of drama trying to get these from the post office. And you're gonna be just as surprised as I am. I seriously have no idea what's inside. And then there is one more thing. I don't know what it is. Dude, I, so let's go. Welcome back to the channel, and if you know what this is, then this is the place for you. I talk about vintage collecting from the 70s, 80s, sometimes even the 90s. So if you think this channel is for you, hit that subscribe button. And to support the channel and make these videos possible, you can join either on YouTube or on Patreon. So take a look at all my links down there in the description to support this channel. So like I said, I have a lot of mail to go through this week, and we're going to start with the first one right here the one that i actually know what's inside and this is from my good friend drew tag and if you've watched my entire channel this case back here is from drew his company is called collector displays and they make gorgeous cases not just for vintage star wars but they have other lines coming out for he-man gi joe i mean basically whatever line that you collect he probably has a case for it and down there is my creature display case which he also built for me and i just ordered one more case and that's for my grading collection so all 96 figures that i'm going to get graded from the vintage kenner star wars line that's all going to go in that case so check out his website i'm not an affiliate i'm a fan and a customer i just believe in his product so much and plus he's just a great guy and he's a collector himself so go support drew if you're collecting these buy a case from him they look gorgeous you won't regret it all right so enough of that let's get to opening what he sent and i always use my trusty cooking shears i get a lot of flack for that but uh <laughs> i don't like using an exacto knife i i have a leatherman and if you guys know what a leatherman is uh we're best friends i have to be very very careful about this one because i know what's inside and this thing has a uh, um like formica like a particle board uh, protecting it because what's inside is very, very fragile. All right, here we go. Finally got this thing open. And uh, inside is another mystery package. For all of you who know, I am collecting the Burger King glasses. So you could also get these super stamps. So this would have been advertised in the store and you go and you get, I think you needed to get uh, either a large Coke or even the glass. And then you got these super stamps. And this is really cool of Drew to send us this. So each week you can come in and get a new set of stamps for your collection. Here is one set right here that you would have gotten uh, back in 1980. And this is double sided. So there's a scene back here with a medical frigate. That's, uh, I think, I believe that's from the end, the last scene of the movie. And you open this, and you can see all the scenes and all the collections of the stickers that you would need to complete your full set. And you can actually stick them here on the sticker book and hang it up as a, uh, you know, as a poster. I would, if I was a kid, I would totally do this. I don't remember ever going into Burger King except to get the glasses. I would have dragged my parents in there and said, hey, after a baseball game or whatever, could we go to Burger King so I can complete my set of stamps? I would have totally done that. But Drew did not have to send this. He did. He knew I was a huge fan of the Burger King vintage set. <laughs> this is honestly just something else that could lead me down a rabbit hole to collect every sticker set. I don't think I'm going to do that, but it's nice to have this piece of vintage like memorabilia um, from back in the day because this is stuff that I did, I was hyped about when I was a kid, you know? You want to go to Burger King and see what sticker set do they have next? You know, you go to your friend's house and you, I used to trade the Topps cars with my friends. So I would have done the same thing with this. I didn't get into these without when I was a kid, but I can see myself getting into these just as much as I was in to collecting the glasses. So thanks a lot, Drew. Um, really appreciate it. So if you don't know Drew, go to Collector Displays. Dot, uh, I, I believe it's collectordisplaysuk.com and go check out all of his cases um, for whatever line you collect. 
I collect vintage Star Wars. That case is a case that Drew made. So thanks a lot, Drew. So let's get in to another package. All right, we're going to start with the packages that didn't have any drama. So this one comes from Josh Mopar M. Uh, I've, he's been like an OG of the channel. So it says, uh, fragile, please do not bend. So we will not do that. To Joey, AKA the Padawan collector. All right, I gotta be very, very careful. I don't want to bend this or rip it. And I do save every card that I get. I have a scrapbook of this whole journey. Oh, oh my God. So if you are a follower of this channel, um, I did get the Star Wars Creature Cantina adventure set. And the one I bought uh, came without this sticker right here. So uh, Josh, man, uh, this is absolutely fantastic because I was going to buy a complete base to this. Now I don't have to. Now I can just put this within my set and um, it's officially complete. Let me read this, first of all. Uh, Dear Joey, it's been almost a year now since your uh, playset run episode nine where you picked up your Cantina playset, but I wanted to send a little something and I hope you'll be able to use. I had been missing the Cantina table decal for my display Cantina and recall you needing a replacement. Not wanting to pull these from an original unused sticker sheet, I found a seller that had both vintage Kenner stickers in the like or new condition and had just come loose from their sticker sheet. The price was reasonable, so we snagged them up for us. Man, that's that's super fantastic. That's, dude, that's awesome, man. That's awesome with you, Josh. I'd love to hear what you recommend for the re-adhering these original decals. Keep up the amazing work and take care, my friend. Josh, a.k.a. Morpar McNeil. Um, you know what? For adhesive, I always go to E6000 first. I'll research more and I'll put that in my Q&A section, but I always go to E6000 first just because it's it's really gentle and it doesn't leave that that crusty uh, residue that a lot of the other model glues use. It it dries clear, so I tend to go with E6000 first, but man, this is awesome. So I think I'm going to try that. I'm going to use like a hot sponge, hot water, and get that old sticker off and then I'll try the e E6000, but I'm going to research it first. I am going to research it first to see what the best adhesive is to put on this sticker and to place this back into my um, my Creature Cantina set. So thanks a lot, Josh. That was, that was so awesome. And I'm going to save this card forever. So thanks a lot. All right, next one. And this is the non-drama package. This one comes from Brandon D., Oh my gosh, I see some some grading action going on. Let's read the letter first. I started collecting vintage Star Wars figures again in January of 2023. Your YouTube channel was one of the first ones that came up when I searched for vintage Star Wars. Your content is very informative. Here are two Ahsoka cards from the Topps throwback series to add to your collection. Thanks again, Brandon. On Instagram, Clone Trooper two one one, dude, that is, that is, I'm I'm beyond speechless because if you all watch the channel, you know how much of a huge fan of Ahsoka I am, and um, I'm really glad, Brandon, that you're getting into the vintage. Um, you know, I think they're, I think vintage toys. There's nothing better than vintage toys. There's nothing better than reliving your childhood and even for the next generations that are coming up you know that's why i'm doing this channel and that's why i'm so enthusiastic about it because i really want that next generation to understand either why we love these toys uh, the generation that actually experienced the original star wars or why they could get into the vintage toys you know i think that's that's sort of been my mission here but wow check these out uh these are both graded at a gem mint pen. Holy moly. So right here we have the number 76, Ahsoka versus Grievous. Throwback Thursday, gem mint 10. That's amazing. And the next one is a 2023 top Star Wars, number 77. That's my year. Ahsoka versus Darth Vader. 
Throwback Thursday PS10s. Wow, these are completely gorgeous. Man, Brandon, can't thank you. I, I'm speechless, man. I can't thank you enough. These are gorgeous cards. Gorgeous cards. And yes, these are going to stay in my collection forever. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. So this is the last of the drama-free boxes. That means every box right here had a lot of drama in it. And I had two instances where these had a lot of drama. This one was the first one, this yellow box. And the rest of these, I'll, I'll let you know what happened. So that way you can give me your opinion about it. But let's get to this box first. So this is from Gary M. And if you guys are in the Star Wars community, uh, you know Gary M. He's, he's a cool dude, man. Haven't met him in person yet. I think we missed each other by like a day at either Star Wars Celebration or another uh, action figure convention. Beautiful package. And there is a letter. Hey, Joey, some items you need or may not want or neither. Anyways, they are in your possession now. Death Star strut for the third floor. And I actually needed that. And, uh, you know, Gary reached out and he said, hey, I'm going to send it to you. But the rest of the stuff that I'm reading right here, empty tops boxes in varying degrees of condition. And Gary knows I'm collecting the top series. Wow, that's awesome. Let's see if you have any restoration skills or placeholders until you get replacements. And an original Jason W. Christman. I think you like this character. Enjoy, Gary. So can't wait to see what the Jason W. is. But that's really cool to Gary because uh, I've been really stoked on collecting the... Dude, look at that. Look at that. Dude, this is awesome. This is awesome. I don't care, Gary, if they're... Dude, they could be like half charred up and like, you know, waterlogged. Dude, these are friggin' amazing. So this is the Orange series. You got the red Empire Strikes Back. The blue Empire... Dude. You got Return of the Jedi blue series. You got the green series from Star Wars. That's freaking amazing. And there's the strut right here. I am completely speechless. Completely speechless. I mean, not just by this right here, which is beyond generous. You know, everything that, that we've opened today is just freaking speechless, man. <laughs> here's here's the strut, which I needed, and I am going to put inside my, my collection today. So the strut that I had uh, was broken. I usually do three videos when I get play sets. The first one I do is telling you about the history, how I got it, how much I paid, things like that. And inside that first video, I showed uh, me building it and putting it together. And I showed that the strut that I had was broken. And then in the second videos that I do, I just edit everything out and just show you the build video, which you'll see again. I show the broken strut. And then the third video I do is me unboxing it and getting my reaction of, you know, finally getting that piece. But this is, uh, this is really rad and in great condition too. So I'm really going to enjoy uh, finally completing that. And then there is one more thing that I don't know what it is. Don't know what it is. Dude. An original piece of art signed by Jason W. Christman. I'm freaking speechless, man. Ahsoka Tano is my favorite character. Close in all of Star Wars, right? The characters that I really, I really love. Darth Vader uh, from the original trilogy. Anakin Skywalker from the prequels. And in this uh, next generation of Star Wars, you know, the Dave Filoni modern era, it's Ahsoka Tano. And the reason why I, I love Ahsoka Tano so much is because she's really, besides Anakin Skywalker, who we missed out on a lot of years of, she's really the only quote-unquote Jedi that we saw from a very young Padawan and we saw her grow up and we got to discover, you know, how people taught her, like her weaving in and out of the force and things like that. So I think 
that's why I, I bond with Ahsoka so much is because of the fact that I always wanted to know what it was like growing up Jedi. And we saw glimpses of Anakin. I wish that we can go back and get a series like the Clone Wars that takes us through young, young Anakin. I know there's novels out there and short stories that we can enjoy that aren't canon, but I would really love Lucasfilm to go back and kind of give us what we got with Ahsoka. Like, how rad would that be to see Anakin going through the trials and Anakin, you know, just doing all of that stuff and learning about the Force? So, yeah, Gary, thanks a lot. This is uh, this is really cool, and I am definitely going to frame this, and it's going to go uh, in my personal office where I have a lot of, uh, you know, autographed art, autographed Star Wars art. So, man, like, what can I say, Gary? You You get me, brother. You get me. So, um, yeah, thanks a lot. The rest of these boxes have drama with every single one of them. And let's just go through it, okay? So I went to the post office. I have a P.O. box. And I've been going for the last maybe three to four months on a pretty regular basis. And there's been no mail. But I know that people have been sending me things. So I thought that was weird. So... You know, I was going to ask about a request to say, you know, where is my mail going? Is it missing? You know, I was, first of all, I'm always getting these um, little tags in my P.O. box saying that there's a package for you, right? It was too big to fit inside your P.O. box. So that's how I knew that there's boxes coming in because I'd always see these tags, but I would go up to the front. You know, you're supposed to hand them your ID, which I don't know why, but, you know, you hand them your ID and they go back there and they check and they always come back and they say, no, here's why. Because a lot of people put either the Padawan Collector or Joey Padawan, which isn't my real name. You know, if you want to know my real name, it's not hard to know. Um, it's Joey Castagnetto. So if anybody is going to send P.O. Box uh, to me, just put Joey Castagnetto. I'll put my spelling down there of, of my real name. But that's why my packages have been going, uh, have been stored. So these have been stored for about six months, I think going all the way back to August. So I'm so I'm so sorry if you've been sending me packages and I haven't been showing them on the air. It's because the post office kept them. But this package right here, which we're going to open right now, this package right here gave me a lot of trouble because the post office thought that it came from Russia. And it's okay if things come from Russia. I have friends who live in Russia, you know, but I guess that post office in particular has a thing against Russia because they gave me the stink eye. They were asking me questions. Who do you know in Russia? First off, this package isn't from Russia. They mistaked the um, the lettering on here. This is actually from Cyprus. It's in Greek. So I was like, I looked at the package and I was like, Russia, what do you, what do you mean? I don't want to laugh because I didn't want to be rude. And I was like, that's Greek. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if they went in the back and looked it up, but they came back out and they gave me the package. But I just thought it was weird that they asked me, who do you know in Ru in Russia? Who do you, who do they care? Who, what, I, where I get my mail from, right? Um, maybe I was suspicious that day. Maybe I had a hoodie on like I always do. Who knows? But it's none of their business, right? Um, I, I, and the same thing happened with these, you know, I had a they wanted to know who the Padawan collector was. They wanted to know why are you using a fictitious name? So, so just, if you want to send it to my real name, send it to my real name. But um, I thought that was, I was really disappointed actually in the post office that they ask questions like that. Like I have a YouTube channel and I shouldn't even have to say I have a YouTube channel. It's my PO box. I pay for it. Mail comes to me. Just give me my mail. Thank you very much, post office. I love you guys. I love you guys. I don't want you to hate me. I love anybody who works at the post office. But I thought the questioning was a little bit overboard, you know. Um, and honestly, I got I got chastised. I got chastised and said, "Don't you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't have. You should just put your real name on there." I can do whatever I want, honestly. All right, let's open up this package. So this one is from Evangelos. 
I'm always very, very careful about opening stuff because I don't know what can be inside. I don't want to rip anything. That's my fear. All right, so it's a letter. Greetings, Padawan. I'm Evangelos, a.k.a. Bounty Hunter 77. As I travel through the galaxy looking for bounties, my advanced YouTube scanner picked up an unusual broadcast with the phrase, there is no shame in being a Padawan. And if you don't know, that's my catchphrase. <laughs> my initial thought was to find your ship or base and blow it up. Glad you didn't. <laughs> but this is a fun letter. But as a Star Wars collector, I decided to give it time and follow your journey. And what a journey it was. A plethora of information visually and verbally regarding figures, toy sets, and many more. Since that day, you and your videos have been a day-by-day -day trusty companion on my journey to find and collect as many vintage Star Wars toys as I can. The quest will be long, but the reward is worth it. Yes, it is. Because for me, it is not only to collect, but also the effort of keeping the history behind each toy. That's why I fell in love with this, because it's every, every figure has a story in history. Every vintage collection, regardless of the line, is a time capsule. I completely agree. For the old ones to remember and the new ones to learn and admire. I completely agree. Um, these toys are time capsules, not only for the figure themselves, but in that particular period of time, right? The early 80s, what was going on? What song was, was a number one song? Where were you? Like, what grade were you in? You know, what was your room? What did your room look like? All that to me... It's just when I see these action figures, I just don't see the action figure. A thousand memories just go through my mind as I pick up every one of those action figures. So, uh, Evangelos, I'm right there with you. Let's go back to the letter. For your collection, I'm also sending you an Ahsoka Funko Pop, a Vader coin from the Star Wars 30th anniversary that, I, that has been in my collection since 2007, a Lego Hoth Rebel Soldier, when I'm not blasting someone, I do custom. Oh, that's very cool. I can't wait to see it. And a few other items. For your viewers who can be new collectors, my three pieces of advice are, let's see what this is, to be focused on the line you like to collect. That's sound advice. I agree. Be patient and do research before buying. You guys know I'm super big on research. And last but not least, have fun and enjoy every moment of it. And Evangelos, I have to really give you props for these three because they're things that I have to remind myself on every time, especially the last one. There's been some times where I get frustrated and I get, I get in these moods uh, about either making videos or something like that where I get mad and then immediately I stop and I say, dude, this is a hobby. You're collecting vintage toys. You know, so those moments last minutes, if not seconds, because you have to remind yourself, this is not stressful. This is fun. Take your time. Do that research. You know, stay focused. And, you know, I would add another one. Get into the community because you can do this by yourself. But, dude, this collecting vintage community, doesn't matter what line you're in, the community is where it's at, brother. So thank you for, for this letter. Hold on, there's, there's one more paragraph. My friend, keep your camera rolling and I will be waiting to see you on your next episodes, which I will call The Padawan's Adventures, The Quest for the Ultimate Star Wars Collection. That's, that's awesome. That's all for now. Bounty Hunter out, BH77. Uh, thank you, Evangelos, Bounty Hunter 77. I, I love reading those things, man. I, I love reading that. So there's another letter right here. <laughs> letter of certification this certifies that the padawan collector is the lawful owner of the funko star wars exclusive ahsoka tano 578 power of the galaxy i am going to frame this sucker right here this is awesome this is going in my office man here are the coins first before we get into the funko <laughs> i love that man i love that certificate that's so awesome Oh, this is so rad. Star Wars Revenge of the Sith coin. That is so freaking rad. I dig this. I really dig collecting coins, man. Here's the Vader coin right there. That is so freaking rad. I love that. What we got here? We got a mask. Bounty Hunter 77 mask. Gonna, I'm going to rep this for sure. 
Bounty Hunter 77 Magnet. This is going on the refrigerator. A lot of goodies in this one, man. S a Cypress patch. This is going on the jean jacket, man. I got to represent Cypress now. <laughs> Some people might think it's Russia, but it's not. It's Cypress. So here's a Star Wars Trilogy 30th Anniversary Keychain. This is amazing. I don't like taking things out of the packaging. Am I, am I weird like that? I'm going to keep this in the packaging. Oh, and here's the custom. Oh, can I open this? I want to open this one. Because it came, it came detached. So I kind of want to open it to fix it. But I don't want to disturb all the snow in there. Oh, that's awesome. If Send me a message to let me know if I can open it so I can, I can reattach the legs. But this is freaking awesome. I love this. Evangelo, send me a message and let me know if I can open this and reattach the legs. All right? I don't want to mess it up in case, you know, I'm not supposed to. So let me know. Here's something that I have been hunting for for a very long time. And Evangelos told me that he was going to send me this. So I, I wasn't sure if he was going to send it, but I have been looking for this Ahsoka Tano Power of the Galaxy Funko Pop for a very long time. I didn't pre-order on Amazon because I believe this was an Amazon, an Amazon exclusive. Um, I did not pre-order on Amazon. I thought I could find it at stores like, you know, uh, on the secondary market, like my local uh, comic book and action figure stores. They were not selling them. Uh, I looked on Amazon. Nowhere was were people selling them. I did find on eBay selling for three times what it, it should be sold for. And that was when it first came out. You know, people would buy these and then they would put them right on eBay for three times the amount. Um, so I was going to wait it out. And then Evangelo said he was going to send me one. And here it is. And if there's one thing I do love collecting, it's the Ahsoka Tano Funko Pops. Don't know why. You know, I, I love the way they look. You know, I told you why uh, Ahsoka Tano is my favorite character. But Evangelos, thank you so much, man. Um, again, speechless, but I, I really appreciate you sending that letter, sending in, you know, all of this stuff. That certificate is is just, that certificate is just like bonkers, man. I love it. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, Evangelos. All right, so next we're going to get into the mystery, mystery boxes. And this one is from Debbie J., um, I have no idea what these could be. So I'm very interested in what could be inside here. Holy moly. Did you guys see that? I would guess about two episodes ago, I, I did say, I think it was on a Q&A, somebody asked me, would I collect uh, the Friar Tuck to to put right next to my Gamorrean guard and I said yes absolutely and somebody Debbie uh ordered this for me and this is the original Friar Tuck uh from the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves this is amazing so this is the first run so I know a little bit about these Robin Hood Prince of Thieves um toys so this is the first run and in the first run they couldn't get the rights to Kevin Costner's face. So on the back of this one, uh, they have the version that isn't Kevin Costner, at least his uh, his mold. They eventually redid uh, that action figure and made it in Kevin Costner's likeness. Uh, like I said, on the first run, they didn't get the license to use his face. So this is from the first run press of the Robin Hood. And the Friar Tuck figure and the Gamorrean Guard figure Obviously, the Gamorrean Guard came out first in 1983. This used the same body mold. Obviously, different paint, but it used the same body mold. They flipped out the head. Uh, so if you see these two side by side, they use the Gamorrean Guard body. So, Debbie, thank you so much for sending me what I believe is part. This is part of the Star Wars Kenner history. And Debbie, you know how much of a history buff I am on these vintage action figures. So thank you for finally giving me a beautiful rendition of this mint on card. This is my first Robin Hood Prince of Thieves. And if you also look on the back, 
there's the Shearwood Forest playset, which uh, in our uh, vernacular, it's called the Ewok Village playset. Uh, this one is different though because it has a canopy of trees and the battle wagon that you see right next to it was also used in the power of the force line for the, the Ewok wagon. It's a, it's a sign of a toy company reusing assets, you know, in, in different movies, but they do it all the time now, you know, did they do all the time back then? They do it all the time now, but thank you for this beautiful action figure, Debbie. I really am going to enjoy this. Okay. Two more boxes to go. Uh, and these are from the drama boxes. Again, the post office almost didn't give me these, but we're past that. We're forgetting about it. Let's just open up these packages. This one actually didn't have a name on it. So I don't know who sent this because, um, again, it's from somebody who sent me something from eBay, I'm guessing, but it did not have a name on the package. So I have no idea who sent this to me. Uh, maybe we'll find out. Maybe there's a letter inside. Oh my God. I can't believe what's inside this. Holy moly. For those of you who don't know what this is, <laughs> have you ever heard of the Return of the Jedi Battle at Sorlax Pit game? I remember this when I was a kid. I did not have one when I was a kid. Oh, my, and it's unused contents. Holy moly. And there's, there's no letter in here. I don't know who sent this to me, but this is an original 1983 board game. The Battle at the Sarlex Pit. I remember playing this when I was a kid, but this is in pristine condition. I don't know who sent me this. Look how rad this little Jabba looks. This is the best action piece ever. This had this is unused content. I mean, maybe I don't know. I can't tell if it's been set up because nothing's been perforated. This is all unused content. Holy moly! It is so freaking rad, and there's no card. There's no card in here. All right, who sent this to me? So if you are the person who sent this to me, um. Please DM me so I can thank you uh, for sending this in. And everything is unopened. Everything is still inside the the. Everything is still inside the plastic. You know, some pieces have come loose, and there might be three pieces missing, uh, at least from the uh, the little action figures. Or is it? Let me see. So we have Gamorrean guards and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's one little action figure missing from here. But other than that, this is an, an amazing piece. I would love to know who sent me this because there's no card. Uh, there's, like I said, there was no, when it was sent from eBay, it was sent from a business. So I don't know who sent this to me. I would love to know, but, um, whoever sent this, this is amazing. Okay. Here is the last package and this one has a name. It's from Katie S. So thank you very much, Katie. So this is an... All right, I'm really confused here. So Katie, did you send that last one too? Because this is another board game. So it's the Star Wars Adventures of R2-D2 game. And I, I've never played this when I was a kid. But look how, look how, I wonder what year this is from. This is from 1977. So Katie, did you send the last one as well. This is so, this is so cool. I would have loved playing this when I was a kid. God, I think me and the kids are going to play this tonight if if we're able to. But yeah, right here, characters and vehicles, 
1977 20th Century Fox. Copyright 1977. General Mills Fund Group Incorporated. It actually has a date of 1978. So, but look how, look how bright the colors are. It hasn't faded at all. And this is a sticker that's on a cardboard and the sticker is not raised at all. Great condition. Oh, this is so cool. And this is an unused condition. God, this is unused. This, I mean, there's a tear right there. But these have been unused. Fan freaking tastic. I mean, I can always use, you know, other pieces other than the original R2s to play this game. You know, I can use like, you know, little colored dots that are the same as this. But this is an unused freaking condition. Katie, this is this is amazing. Thank you so much. You even has the insert in great condition. This is honestly beautiful. So I finally found out who sent me these mystery items. A friend and member of the YouTube channel, Chalupra Cabra, I love saying his YouTube name, sent me a message asking me if I had received these items. So thanks a lot for these collectibles that were honestly a mystery to me. Mystery solved, and I can't thank you enough, Chalupra Cabra. All right, that mail haul just blew my mind. I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you who sent those things in and because you guys really paid it forward and you guys, you know, thanked me for doing this channel, something that I love, I want to pay it forward for you. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to donate $250 to Toys for Tots and I'm also going to donate $250 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So if you don't know any of those foundations, please look them up. Toys for Tots, they send toys to children, especially during the holidays. You know, kids and families who may not be able to afford toys at certain times of the year, you can either donate toys or you can donate money for toys to be purchased. And the Make-A-Wish Foundation, it grants wishes to kids who have unfortunately been diagnosed with terminal illnesses or, or in situations to where they can't enjoy life fully right now, whether they are in hospital or in hospice. Make-A-Wish Foundation provides wishes that just make a kid's life that much better. So please go check out Toys for Tots and go check out the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And I want to thank everyone who goes and donates or at least goes to their pages and checks them out. I love both of those foundations equally. And thank you to the friends of the channel who send things in. I am still speechless about everything that you guys sent in. Um, I love this community and I'm glad that I could give back in the ways that I give back to you guys. It's like the Lion King. It's the circle of life. I love it. So if you want to watch more vintage videos, click on the videos on your screen now. And as always, my friends, thank you. And I will see you next time.